Jesus Christ said that he would send a specific type of servant who would prepare the way for his second coming. Christ said this man would come in the end time and would be like his ancient servant Elijah. This man has already come, just as Christ said he would. Learn about a recent religious leader who had the same power as a man of God who parted rivers, caused drought, and called down fire from heaven. Next on The Key of David with Gerald Flurry. Greetings, everyone. In Matthew 17, chapter 17, it talks about where Christ gave his disciples a vision that uh, there was of his second coming and an end time Elijah was going to precede that great event. He was going to prepare the way for the second coming. So, uh, the, Matthew 17 talks about how he restored so much that ought to get the attention of this world because it's one of the most pivotal prophecies in all the Bible. And this Elijah did in the church what Jesus Christ is going to do in the entire world very shortly. That's how the church is prepared for that second coming and prepared to be able to rule with Jesus Christ. The Bible discusses three Elijahs. There is the original Elijah, and then came John the Baptist, who prepared the way for the first coming of Jesus Christ. And Luke 1 and verse 17 says that John came in the spirit and power of Elijah. He came in the spirit and power of Elijah. Now that power John had, and there he performed miracles and uh, did all kinds of things. And then this end time Elijah is going to come and have that same power, and that was also true of the original Elijah. The Elijah had power, his followers had power, and there was, there's always power in the work of Elijah. That's something that most people don't really understand. Notice 2 Kings 2 and verse 14. Let's look at the power that uh, the Elijah work had and his followers had after Elijah had been replaced by Elisha. Notice what it says in 2 Kings 2 and verse 14, just before they were to cross the Jordan River. The only problem is they couldn't get across, so there had to be a miracle performed. Notice what it says. And he, Elisha, who was a follower of Elijah, and he took the mantle of Elijah and followed him uh, in, in his work. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters. That was the first time. But it didn't say, that's all it said. He just smote the waters and nothing happened. There was no power. What, there was no parting of the, the Jordan River. What was wrong? And then Elijah began to see what the problem was, and he, it goes on to say, and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters a second time, they parted here and there, and Elisha went over. Now that, that's amazing when you think about it, because the first time he just smote the waters, nothing happened. And then the second time he said, well, where is the God of Elijah? And then he smote the waters, and the river parted, and they walked across. And all of those disciples of Elisha then knew that he had the mantle of Elijah, and he came uh, in the spirit of a, and power of Elijah. He had that kind of power. Now that is the kind of power that God is talking about when He's talking about uh, John the Baptist and this end time Elijah as well as the original Elijah. It's the same work. It's the same instruction. And uh, certainly uh, with uh, some different uh, approaches to certain things, of course, uh, at different times. But here you could see that God actually corrected Elisha and let him know, now you better keep in mind, if you want to have real power, you better remember the God of Elijah and realize the, that God empowered Elijah. He empowered that man. And 
And we, we just cannot forget that because if you find the Elijah work, you'll find a work of awesome power. That's the way it should be in religion. There, here, here we saw real power. You will, if you want to uh, uh, look to Elijah, if you find the, the God of Elijah and find Elijah, you know that God gives him power, real power. And there, here is an example of that. Uh, there were miracles once he acknowledged and looked to that God of Elijah. It's not looking to a man, it's looking to God. But as God uses Elijah, well, of course, you look to him in, in that respect. But it's all God's doing, and you will have a real impact in your life or in, in your work if you keep that in mind. You can have that power. You can have that kind of power, and that's the kind of power God wants us to have. And I'm going to show you some of it here today. Real power in religion. And Elijah means, my God is God, the real God of omnipotent power. That's what he, the lesson that God wants us to get out of this. So let's look at Matthew 16 and verse 27. We'll start there and see what this is all about. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of His Father and His angels, and then He shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. Now obviously uh, this had to be a vision because Christ wasn't returning at that time. So notice verse 1, there should be no chapter break there. And after six days, Jesus taking Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringing him up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. Now this is the, this is the God of power. This is the God that Elijah was following. This is the God that John the Baptist followed. This is the God that at this end time Elijah followed. And he's come and gone, and we can prove that to you. And we'll do so with our literature uh, we give you at the end of this program. Verse 4, Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you will, let us make here three tabernacles, one for you, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Now we're going to see those three personalities mentioned again, and that's why I wanted to read this verse to you and show you there's a reason for that, and, and there, it's all tied together. And it has to do with God's rule over a church, His church, or over the whole world in the near future, very near future. Verse 9, And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man. It's a vision, obviously. Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elijah must first come? That is, before the second coming. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elijah truly shall first come and restore all things. Now John the Baptist didn't restore anything. This is the end time Elijah type. It's the end time Elijah type. And he restored all things. Now that's uh, that requires power, real power from God, if you understand the, what that all means. When He restored all things, all the vital foundational doctrines of the church that had been lost, well, you know that takes power. And this is all about the end time, Elijah coming before uh, Christ's second coming. John prepared the way for Christ's first coming, but he didn't restore anything. This is all about the end time Elijah. See, when uh, uh, this was written, John the Baptist had already come. Christ didn't even start his ministry until after John uh, had done or fulfilled his commission. And then Christ began his. But the, the word restore means to bring back that which was lost. Now that's, that's a real shocker if you think about it. He had to restore all things. Does that mean everything 
all the foundational doctrines were lost. That is what it means. That is what it means. And that, uh, that re reveals volumes about how this world is deceived. Even the religious world is that deceived. And God wants us to follow the God of Elijah. And we have to know something about Elijah or we won't understand what God is doing today and where He is. We won't understand all of those pivotal, electrifying uh, prophecies. And this one in Matthew 17 is one of the greatest prophecies in all the Bible. And it, it just is the embodiment of the power of God. Where is the power in religion today? Or Christianity, where do you see that power? God says, this man restored all things. I mean, that's, that's quite an accomplishment in his life, and quite a work in his life, and it took many miracles to achieve that, many revelations from God to show him what had to be restored. That's something that has to be revealed by God to a man, a man. That's what it's all about. Now, the uh, people of God have today the greatest calling that God ever will give any group of people today before the second coming of Christ, all the way back to the beginning. But there weren't very many that uh, were converted in the Old Testament. But you have to find the Elijah work. That's the key, finding that Elijah work, and there is a lot to that. You need to understand it. We have to study and find out, well, what does this mean? This is one of the, the, I think, the pivotal prophecy that Christ gave them about this end time. How much do we understand about this prophecy? Notice verse 12. But I say unto you that Elijah is come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed, Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. So there, uh, John the Baptist was a type of Elijah, and he's talking about both uh, John the Baptist and this end time Elijah as well. So then verse 13, Then the disciples understood that he spoken to them of John the Baptist. Yes, there is a uh, John the Baptist that prepared the way for the first coming of Jesus Christ, and now there's an end time Elijah that comes and prepares the way for the second coming of Jesus Christ. He's, he's talking about two Elijah types. And, uh, and this last one, unlike John the Baptist, restored all things. All things that, that, that had been lost, if you can believe that. How little understanding did this world have until this Elijah came on the scene in this end time, and he is now gone. He has already done his work, and he restored all things. Now that is just a a ton of miracles. He was empowered in, in a mighty way by the great God. And we have to remember now, if you go back to Matthew 16, verses 27 and 28, that it, this is all restored just before the second coming of Jesus Christ. This is, this is a vision here. And God showed them that there would be an Elijah come in this end time just before the second coming of Jesus Christ and He would restore all things." Now that is the, one of the most powerful works that has ever been on this earth. If you restore all things, and it shows that, oh, how much had been lost. So it's implying that uh, most people would not know and understand this Elijah, just like they didn't understand the first Elijah type, John the Baptist. They didn't know who he was. And that's implying that, well, they wouldn't understand who this end time Elijah is either, but both of them come in the spirit and in the power of Elijah. Now, that, uh, that's something we ought to consider. And you talk about power, let me show you what real power is coming very shortly. What is happening, what happened with Elijah in the church today is only 
just a little type of what is coming to the whole world. Elijah restored all things in the church. He didn't restore all things in the world at all. It, Jesus Christ is going to do that when He gets here, but by those restoring all things in the church, they're being prepared to help Christ restore all things to the entire world. They're going to be ruling with Christ and sitting on a throne with Christ and be the bride of Christ and have all that power to teach the world all things. Now that is something to behold. Notice Acts 3 and verse 19. Repent you therefore, and be converted, and that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. The word refreshing in this verse means a cooling, a recovery of breath, or a revival. After 6,000 years of rule under Satan the devil, well, God needs to refresh this earth and bring it peace and happiness and abundance and joy. And that's what it's talking about. It's coming, and it's coming shortly. This entire world is going to be turned right side up. It's upside down now, and it's doing everything wrong, and it's uh, facing its own uh, demise. <laughs> All flesh would be destroyed. All uh, There'd be no flesh saved alive, the Moffat translation says, unless Jesus Christ returned. That's the kind of nuclear danger we're facing today on this earth. But notice what it says in verse 20 and 21, And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution or restoring. See, the times of restitution of all things. See, Christ is going to come and restore all things in this world. What has previously been restored in His church in this end time. So a, a type of this is, has happened on this earth in this end time. Where did it happen? Are you aware of where it is? And are you aware that you could be a part of this? This is real power we're talking about. The restoring of all things which Christ is going to do to the whole world what Elijah did in the church, which God has spoken by the mouth of all His holy prophets since the world began. Now he's going to restore the government of God that was taken away by Lucifer when he rebelled. And then, of course, all of those truths that God has restored uh, throughout the ages, Satan took them away too. And he had to send an end time Elijah to restore all things. First, there was the government, because everything revolves around government. You can't do anything if you don't have government. All these things he's talking about and all these foundational doctrines revolve around the government, the government of God. So the, uh, when you uh, think about this, it's, uh, it, it's truly one of the most uh, inspiring truths in the entire Bible. It's just that wonderful. So when Christ returns, He was going to restore all things. But you see, first He has to uh, do that inside the church through Elijah. And that is being done through Elijah and Elijah work here in this end time. Everything revolves around the government of God and God's true church. Now let's go back. I want to show you just some of the power involved in this Elijah work. Let's look at verse 4 first. Remember you the law of Moses, my servant, which I, com I commanded unto him in Horeb, or Mount Sinai, it, should, it could read, and it is Mount Sinai, for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. So here are these three personalities again. We're going to see here's Moses and Christ already talked about. And now it, in verses 5 and 6, it mentions Elijah, just as it did in Matthew 17. Notice what it says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming 
of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Here is Elijah coming and turning the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the hearts of the children to the fathers. He is building godly families, and that takes real power. I mean, it takes amazing power to turn people's lives around like that. Not, they're, it's not forced. These people wanted that because they saw this is what God said we must do if we're ever going to be in His family for all eternity. This is what it takes. Here is that Elijah type, you see, uh, and, and we'll, uh, again, we can prove to you in our book, so I want to send, uh, send you a copy of Malachi's message, and Daniel unlocks the book of Revelation, and all of that will explain to you about this end-time Elijah, and that there had to be uh, an Elijah come on the, uh, the scene and restore all things, and we have a book on the missing dimension in sex, which will tell you all about the proper family life and how God, from His Bible, teaches us to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. Because you'll never solve the problems of this world until you solve the family problems. It all begins there. Thank God for that wonderful understanding. And you can see where it, the, in uh, verse 1 of uh, chapter 3, let me just read that to you quickly. Uh, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. That messenger is, was the end time Elijah. And uh, it's, it's dual here. He's actually talking to, about John the Baptist and about the end time Elijah. And I'll show you in a moment why. Because John the Baptist went to a physical wilderness preparing the way for Christ. But this end time Elijah goes and faces a spiritual wilderness before the coming of Jesus Christ. You can see that John the Baptist, uh, this is applied to him in Mark 1, verses 1 through 4, Luke 7, verse 27, Mark 11 and verse 10. See, it's talking about the first coming and the second coming, and here it emphasizes the second coming. Verse 2, But who may abide the day of His or Christ's coming, and who shall stand when He appears? For He is a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap, a refiner's fire. It's extremely hot. This is the, the power Christ is going to have when He comes back to this earth. And He's going to burn the impurities right out of those evil ministers who were misleading God's people. This is about the second coming. When you see something that's like a refiner's fire, which is uh, the, the purpose of it is to burn impurities out of rich metals. Now let's take a look at 1 Kings 17 and verse 1. 1 Kings 17 and verse 1. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew or rain these years, but according to my word. You talk about power. Did this Elijah have power? He had, he had power to cause it to flood or to, to have uh, there to be droughts coming upon the earth because he followed God. My God is God. And that's the kind of power he had. And that's the kind of power all these Elijahs have. And you can trace that in their lives and see that they perform greater power uh, or greater miracles, I should say, than uh, the original Elijah did in many ways. So the Elijah work, though, includes all three of these, and it's really about a, a global structure of education where God is going to teach the whole world about the true God that they don't know. They do not know the true God. They think they do, many of them, but they don't. Well, anyhow, you go, Elijah performed a lot of impressive very impressive miracles, and uh, and really make all made all the false ministers look bad. And then Jezebel, the queen, was really enraged by all this, and she said, "Well, she was going to kill Elijah that very same day." 
uh, because of what he did. And then God, uh, Elijah got discouraged and, and God saw that he was, he was, I guess, kind of worn out. And he, he pointed him back and took him back to Mount Sinai. With Mount Sinai that I just talked to you about, where all that thunder and lightning and shaking of the mountain, all that power of God was there. He, he was getting his mind back on God. And then he finally came to the point where he said, well, there was, there was fire and all of that, but then he, there was a still, small voice, which is the way God speaks to us most of the time. There's no thunder, no lightning. Most of the time it's that still, small voice, but the same God of Elijah is in it. The same power that was there with the original Elijah. In Malachi 4 and verse 4, we're told to remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded him in Horeb. So you see, God wants us to look back and see about all this power at Mount Sinai and realize that we can have that power working in our lives if we'll just listen to that still, small voice. That's what God wants us to do. Until next week, this is Gerald Flurry. Goodbye, friends. Thousands of years ago, God gave the prophet Elijah the power to change the course of a nation. A man of God who died 30 years ago used this same divine power to restore all the fundamental doctrines to God's church. To learn about Elijah and the power God gave to him and to the end time Elijah, request our free book, The Former Prophets, How to Become a King. This Bible history is also prophecy for the future. These ancient events recorded in Joshua, Judges, 1st and 2nd Samuel, and 1st and 2nd Kings give us insight into the present day and into the future. Discover the exciting parallels between your life and the heroic lives of Joshua, Hannah, Samuel, David, Elijah. Order the former prophets by Gerald Flurry. The Apostle James wrote his biblical epistle with great urgency, convinced that he was living in the end time. God inspired the message of James to teach those who live in the last days before Christ's return, our time today. James warns about the greatest tragedy on earth today. God's people have rebelled against the truth he restored through an end time Elijah. Request our free booklet, The Epistle of James, to prove who this end time Elijah was and how he restored the truth of the Bible. The end time Elijah has come and gone. Since the day of his death 30 years ago, everything has changed in God's church. Request our free book, Malachi's Message, to learn the riveting story of how God's church plunged off the tracks and what God did to save his loyal people from spiritual catastrophe. 